good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Increase Your Chances of Passing the CIA Exam. My name is Miguel Ramos, and I will be your host for today's event. Today, we are honored to have three presenters who will share with you their industry knowledge and expertise to assist you with your CIA certification journey. First to present will be Jonathan Jones, Manager of Global Certifications here at the IIA, followed by Daniel LaBelle, who is the Chief Audit Executive for the University of Quebec in Montreal and President of CIA International. Our final presenter of the day will be Kelly Quinn, Vice President, IIA Strategic Partnership for the IIA's CIA Learning System. Before we begin, I would like to cover a few housekeeping items. During the presentation, if you have any technical issues, press F5 to relaunch the presentation. This should resolve most issues. You will also want to ensure your flash player is enabled. You may see an option to enable it in your media player on the console. If you continue to experience technical issues, you may also send a message via the Q&A feature on your console. You may also download the slides from today's... You can also find other helpful information in the resource list on the console. If time permits, we'll be taking some questions at the conclusion of the presentation. Please feel free to submit your questions at any time using the Q&A feature. Okay, let's get started by going over today's agenda. What we'll cover today, Certified Internal Auditor Certification Program, CIA Exam Overview, Exam Preparation, the IIA CIA Learning System, study tips and test taking tips, links and resources, and then questions if we have time. Now I'm going to pass it over to Jonathan. Thank you very much, Miguel, and uh, welcome to everyone who's joining us. I'm not sure if it's morning, afternoon, or evening, but wherever you are, welcome, and we're glad you're able uh, to join us today. Um, so as uh, Miguel had uh, spoken and covered briefly, um, we are going to uh, go over the CIA, um, try to give you just some of the basic guidelines um, about the program and enrolling, um, as well as some tips to uh, you know actually uh, passing uh, the exam as well. Um, I'm sure many of you know that the CIA uh, is really the only globally recognized certification for internal auditors. Um, there's 165,000 plus that are going strong. Um, and one thing that we have seen um, is that uh, once you earn the CIA, uh, no matter which country that you go in, for some of you, you, you may not be working with a specific firm. You know, you may be going um, from audit project, external audit, internal audit. Um, you may be bouncing around. And if that is the case, um, the CIA is very well recognized uh, throughout the globe. On the next slide, you're going to see uh, just a little breakdown uh, kind of just like an overview um, worldwide, globally. Um, there's a ton of CIAs in, in each country, um, and uh, the majority of the CIAs, actually, it's pretty funny. They kind of know each other. Uh, so especially with our certification registry that we have now, once you become certified, you become a part of that registry. Um, and it's uh, very simple, um, a lookup tool. You can see if someone is certified, they're actively certified. Um, and it's also a way for uh, maybe some of you to network and, and, and communicate if you're in you know, a foreign place. Hey, I know somebody else who's CIA certified, and that may be um, like a way to, uh, to kind of connect as well. So, of course, um, one of the big things is the benefits of the CIA. Um, obviously, it is, you know, going to broaden your knowledge. It's going to show that you are uh, at the top of your industry as far as knowledge and understanding uh, the principles, um, as well as the uptick trends. Um, one of the major things that um, CIAs are, are known for are the continuing education, um, which is a huge part of once you become certified, it's maintaining that knowledge so you're at the very cutting edge of what's happening in the world uh, of internal audit. On the next slide, we wanted to give you a visual so you can see the financial difference because none of us are working for free, right? So 
the big thing you want to know is, okay, if I earn this, you know, yeah, it's going to be great to show my peers, hey, I've got this, but what's the bottom line? Um, and we wanted to try to quantify that for you. So on this slide, you can see that we polled um, uh, several individual CAEs who I'm sure many of you know are usually in charge of hiring of sometimes an entire internal audit department, um, but definitely the internal uh, auditors on their staff and even some of the leaders in their auditing staff. Um, you can see this breakdown up to $38,000 more. 70% of CAEs say they prefer to hire a CIA, and 84% of the people who we polled did say that they believe that it adds value. So um, I think just with those numbers, um, even though you're going to have people, you know, from different areas and walks of internal audit, it's pretty much across the board. Um, if you do hold a CIA, uh, then it definitely means something um, to not only the hiring individual, but the people who you're doing the work for. Um, we've learned that a lot of the um, a lot of the clients feel a lot more comfortable when they know that you do hold the CIA because, again, it is global, so it, it doesn't. Um, narrow you down to just the standards from one particular region or maybe one particular country. They know that you are up to breast with the uh, with the standards from around the globe. So the certification process itself is very simple. All that you're doing is you apply. After your application, there's a couple of supporting documents which we'll get into that you submit. Very easy process. You do it all from within your CCMS profile. You register. You schedule your exam. And you become certified. Uh, now, there may be obviously some hours of studying. There's some exams that you got to pass, but it really is that simple. You apply, you register, and you become certified. So as long as you do your part, we're going to do our part to try to make it as easy for you as possible. So up next, these are just the basic requirements that you need to become approved into the program. A government-issued ID, a photo ID, driver's license, passport, a national identity card, those are just a couple of examples. Your educational diploma or transcript. Um, for standard education, we ask uh, that you upload an associate's degree or higher. If you don't possess those, there's still an alternative pathway for you to uh, gain entry into the CIA program. You're just required to submit more experience on your exit from the program and uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. And finally is the character reference. Um, basically, this will go uh, directly to the person who you, you know, want to verify your character. And it's very, very simple. It's just that, uh, you know, they understand uh, that you're going for this program and, you know, that they know that you will abide to the IAA's Code of Ethics. The Code of Ethics, by the way, is available on our global IAA website. The examinations are split into three parts. Uh, you can take them in any order. Um, some people uh, may start with part one and just go in the natural sequential order. Um, some may even start with part two or even part three. And the scaled scoring that we have, uh, it's going to be a 600 that you need to pass uh, no matter which exam that you take, um, but it is scaled, so we encourage you to become familiar with the syllabus. Again, that is available on the Global IA website. So you can see the weighted percentage uh, for each section that you'll be testing and how the exams are, are, are broken out. So um, there is a strategy to it. Uh, you know, some people are able to, you know, nail it on the first time and then others after they, you know, kind of experience it, then they're able to progress a lot faster. So here's just the uh, uh, basic information of the exam. There's 125 questions in part one. Part two and part three do have um, 100 multiple choice questions. Um, part one is a little bit longer. Um, however, the majority of that is because we have the, uh, the standards, the IPPF, 
Um, and there's some guidance as well that we'll actually um, touch on briefly here um, that makes a, you know, a huge part of that part one. Um, so that's why we give you a bit more time um, and there are more questions on that part one exam. Um, and then if anybody has, you know, not sure if you've not done the, uh, the testing process before, um, then there is a link uh, for you just to kind of view the environment and know what to expect uh, when it comes to your day of testing. So here is the syllabus that I, I was speaking about, um, and you can see the weighted percentages. So for part one, um, these are really like the foundations, and you can see a huge 35% um, goes to governance, risk management, and control, and these are the core of the IPPF. Um, so you can see just from the weighted percentage, you know, how much of that is a part of that exam. Um, part two, you can see the breakdown as well. It's a little bit more balanced with a, a, a couple less domains. Um, and then part three, um, you will, if anyone has taken it before and maybe you're coming back into the program, you'll notice that part three looks a lot different. Um, and part three, uh, number one, it was updated because IT is becoming uh, more and more a part of the internal audit profession. So that has been incorporated into the part three. Um, and some of the domains were reduced um, to make it more succinct I mean, a bit easier to digest when you're going through your studies. And then finally, uh, we'll take a look at the exit requirements. And this is what I was referencing before with the experience. Um, so once you are approved into the program, you complete the exams. Uh, you are required to evidence experience in order to receive the certification. So remember the initial upload for your education documents. Um, if you happen to upload an associate, then it will require 60 months of experience that you have to evidence. If it is a bachelor degree that you uploaded, then 24 months of experience would be required. And if it's a master's, then it is 12 months of experience. And this is internal auditing experience or associated functions, um, compliance, uh, risk management, um, assessment, things like that. Um, this is the experience that you would need to evidence. Um, and again, if you don't hold uh, either of those and there are alternative pathways, um, the difference, the major difference would be um, additional experience that you would need to evidence in order to proceed uh, with those alternative pathways. And I believe up next we have a poll question. Miguel? Our first polling question is, when are you planning to take a CI exam part? Please select the radio button that best suits your answer and click submit so that your answer is recorded. Again, if you are experiencing technical difficulties, press F5 on your keyboard to refresh your console. Also, be sure that your pop-up blockers are disabled and Flash Player is installed and enabled so you can participate in today's polling questions. We'll give everyone a few seconds more to answer before we continue. I am about to close the poll. If you haven't answered, please do so now and then click the submit button and here are our results. Okay, and let's see, and do we have our results? Let me have a look. Wow, fantastic. So it looks like the majority of everyone uh, does plan on taking the exam within the next six months. Um, I see second is within the next 12 months, and uh, finally, um, the last is not sure yet. Okay, well, hopefully, by the time uh, we get done with this seminar, we'll be able to, you know, help you to make a decision as to when you plan on, you know, dipping your toe in the water and starting that journey. Um, 
on a side note, I, I would recommend definitely within uh, within the next six months. Um, and the reason for that, I will explain in just a couple of slides. So we also wanted to uh, touch base on the exam languages. Um, the exams have been updated. Um, so if you had taken the uh, exam prior to uh, 2019, there would have been a different syllabus, different exam content, those have been updated. Um, and the languages have pretty much all been updated, updated excuse me, uh, save for Polish, which will be updated January 1st of this year. So uh, any of the other languages that you choose to test in, um, you will have that updated exam content uh, in just a little uh, tidbit when you are testing. Uh, if you do choose a, a different language outside of English, you have the ability to toggle a English translation um, and you can go back and forth between that and your uh, exam language of choice. So pretty cool feature for anyone um, who is not a native English speaker. So this is, uh, again, just a, a breakdown of the updated um, CIA uh, exam syllabi, which we touched base on, um, the new uh, part one, part two, and of course the updated part three. Um, and actually I want to talk just a little bit more um, uh, about the part three, uh, because that is where uh, the majority of the work was done when we were going through the syllabus. And we, uh, obviously we want you know, as, as many people to pass as we can, but at the same time, this needs to be a challenge. You know, if everyone's able to pass this, you know, just on the first trial without barely studying, then the CIA is going to lose its value. And a lot of those, you know, poll answers that we got and we showed you at the beginning where people trust the CIA, that's going to dwindle down if everyone's able to, you know, to take the exam and pass it without even trying. So part three, uh, we recognized that there was an opportunity to make that better. Um, and we did that by updating the content. Um, and you'll see that information technology and security uh, makes up a, a large portion of that exam now. Um, these items in these domains were not on the previous version of the syllabus, so this is just an example of the IA um, staying current and maintaining its, uh, its, its status at the forefront of the internal audit profession. And I believe that we have one more poll question. Yes, the next poll question is, have you already applied for the CIA certification program? Please select the radio button that best suits your answer and click submit so that your answer is recorded. Again, if you are experiencing technical difficulties, press F5 on your keyboard to refresh your console. We'll give everyone a few more seconds to answer before continuing. We're about to close the poll. If you haven't answered already, please do so and then click submit. Okay, here are the answers. Awesome. So looking here, it seems that the majority have already applied into the certification program. Great. Um, so that's good news. Um, hopefully you guys have, you know, gotten all of your documents to submit and you're in the process of, you know, preparing for your exam um, and obviously uh, the information from the learning system is really going to help you uh, when it comes to preparing and getting ready to pass those exams. So in the uh, in our last poll question, so the poll question before this last one, um, I said I would recommend testing within the next six months, and this is the reason why. Um, I'm sure some of you are, are aware, uh, but if you're not, um, then the IIA has adapted an online proctoring program to allow you to take the CIA um, from the comfort and the safety of your home. So 
if you're you know not able to go to a test center, you don't feel comfortable. And there are some test centers where is they're not even open yet due to the current global climate. Um, that is not going to prevent you from continuing in your journey. You'll be able to take the CIA um, as well as the CRMA exam. Um, from home. It's a very basic process. Um, there is uh, more information that you can find on the IA website. Um, but again, it's uh, as long as you meet the basic technical requirements, um, which I believe are just having, you know, Windows 7 or higher, um, really just basic RAM, basic processor, uh, then you will be able to participate in the testing from home. Um, a lot of people are a fan of this. Because, again, if there's a problem with media availability in your area or, again, there is um, test centers that are not open, that will not impede you um, from continuing your certification journey. Um, we don't know the end date for this. Um, it was only supposed to be, you know, temporary while things kind of sorted themselves out with the, with, with the pandemic. But um, there was such an overwhelming um, appreciation for it that, you know, we decided to continue it temporarily. Um, but we don't know for sure when it is going to end. So um, if you do want to take advantage of the online proctoring, we encourage you to do that sooner than later uh, before we move back to uh, physical test center um, only. So once you become certified, um, you, you know, pass the exams, do everything. Uh, maintaining the certification is going to be the next level for you, right? So you've got all this knowledge. Now you just need to stay crisp um, and make sure that you're, you know, on top of the profession. So if you are a practicing CIA, we'll ask that you earn 40 hours of CPE every year. If you are a non-practicing CIA, we'll ask that you earn uh, 20 hours of CPE each year. Um, the types of activities can be found in our CPE policy. Again, a lot of the information is on the website, um, but anything associated with internal auditing or its functions, you know, like we said, compliance risk assessment, um, things like that can be counted. Um, so be sure that once you do on your certification, make sure that you are, you know, uh, reporting your CPE so that way uh, you're able to uh, stay active, maintain your status in the uh, IIA certification registry as well. That is only for active um, certified candidates. So be sure to maintain the CPE. We try to make it as easy as possible for you um, as well. And if you have any questions, um, there's the link to download the IA Certification Candidate Handbook. It goes over a lot of the information that um, I've gone over, as well as um, a little more detailed information if you have it about the certification programs. Um, and that's available for download, obviously, at no charge. Um, and you can review that you know, at your uh, own leisure. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Daniel. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Thank you for all this information. Uh, Daniel Lebel speaking over here. I've been a CIA coach for many years now. Um, now that you know all the requirements that you need to have uh, to apply for the CIA certification, and Jonathan was very good in explaining what's all the benefits uh, beside the salary increase, okay? Um, the, the potential that it will get to you as well to get the CIA certification. I see this as a chief audit executive re re very regularly, but you need to make sure that you will be passing the exams. Okay, this is a tough part, of course. Um, you want to make sure that uh, you will be nailing this on the first attempt, of course. And sometimes it could be difficult for some people. Okay, the basic criteria that I see uh, by experience with a lot of candidates in the past years, you need to have three things in order to pass the exam. Okay, the first one would be your experience. Okay, for this, I cannot, I cannot do anything for you. Okay. It's, based on your curriculum and based on what you, you have past experience. But on the next two, you will see how we can help you as well. Of course, you need to study, and I will be giving you some information on how to study and how to get prepared for the exam as well. And the third one is the test techniques, okay? If you don't have the right te test techniques, you will not be able to pass the exam. So the combination of these three will be a, a part of your um, exam preparation, and I will give you more information regarding this. 
Um, of course, we are suggesting to use the CIA learning system. I've been using this for many years. I think this is the proof of quality regarding a CIA certification, okay? Uh, it's very flexible as well, okay? You can do remote uh, ready, uh, remote ready study tools that are available immediately and on demand as well. Uh, it will teach you the entire updated CIA exam syllabus, okay? Including the IPPF, which is very important. This has been developed by the IIA, so they know what we, they are talking about as well. It is designed for learning and memorization. A part of you will see that a part of your study will be part of the uh, learning experience and memorizing some of the information that are very important for you in order to be successful for the exam. And it meets the IIA standards of excellence. Okay, so trust the experts. This is the best solution that I've seen and it's the most accurate and it's always updated regularly as well. Second, you need to choose your learning option, okay? Some of you guys say, okay, I think I have enough experience. I will do some self-study. I will buy the CIA learning system and do it on my own, okay? It goes well if you are very uh, productive and you are able to do this on your own, okay? And you have a lot of experience and you have some experience, okay? So you have online and remote ready function to do this, okay? It's very convenient, okay? And it's mobile optimized, okay? Some of you guys will say, okay, um, maybe I would like to self-study, but I have, I would need to have more than this, okay? I want to maximize my chances to, for success for these exams, okay? So we have instructor-led courses, okay? That are given by top tier CIA instructor as well where we have a structured syllabus and peer discussion with online courses available that are available right now and even more than before due to the pandemic, okay? Now it's very good timing for you to start studying for the CIA learning, for the CIA certification, because there's a lot of uh, opportunities for you at the time. And maybe you have some um, unused capacity on your hand at this moment that will make this a very good timing as well. For those who have a bit, maybe a few colleagues that would be interested, we have as well some corporate um, study option to get some in-house in training within your facility as well. Now we have a polling question, and out to you, Miguel. For the next polling question, how do you like to study? Please select the radio button that best suits your answer and click Submit so that your answer is recorded. Again, if you are experiencing technical difficulties, press F5 on your keyboard to refresh your console. We'll give everyone a few seconds to answer before moving on. I'm about to close the poll. If you haven't answered, please do so now and click the submit button. And here are the results. Thank you very much, Miguel. Okay, thank you for your answer. Okay, study on your own. Okay, self-study program. Uh, again, the CIA learning system is perfect for you if you want to do this uh, at the moment. Okay, and you will see in the next slides how you can be uh, able to get prepared for this and what's the amount of time you should be investing into this as well. In the classroom, I think it's getting tougher with the pandemic right now, okay, with instructor led course, but uh, of course, a lot of people are switching to online like we are doing today uh, with online classroom, with online instructor led course. And quite frankly, we have the same the same type of, uh, of, um, of trading that we're giving in a classroom now that we're giving online because it's getting more and more popular. So whether you are you have considered on your own or in the classroom or online classroom, um, you will see that the CI learning system is the best option for you. Now you want to get prepared to pass, okay? There's different the, the different steps uh, to the success, okay? First, of course, you want to plan your study. We'll see how it's uh, how's the best way to do this and what are the tools that are available for you. Second, you want to study the reading materials, okay? The CI earning system encompasses all the information that you need to to know and some exercises as well. 
talking about exercises, how to apply the concept is very important. Okay, you have some questions, some quizzes that are available for you within the CIA learning system. And then you want to practice for your exam before you're showing up for the real exam. Okay, so there's a CIA practice exam which is available for you within the CIA learning system as well. First, you want to create a study plan, okay? People are asking me, how many hours should I be uh, investing in each part, okay? First, it depends on your experience, okay? Uh, if you have a lot of experience, maybe 40, 30 to 40 hours might be enough uh, for you for the first part, okay? Um, if you don't have a lot of experience with the first part curriculum, uh, maybe you want to go more with 60 or 80 hours, but make sure that you are having or uh, investing 40 at least 40 hours per part and a bit more for the third part if you don't have the background from IT or financial or accounting background as well okay I would suggest to um, to do one part uh, take at least from two to eight weeks to study for one part okay so if I would be investing 40 hours I would be investing 40 hours from two to eight weeks Okay. in order to maximize your chance, chances for success. Okay, uh, If you take six months to study one part, you will be investing 40 hours. Of course, it will evaporate in your brain and you will not be uh, as successful. So between, I would say, uh, four to eight weeks might be the, the, the best way to study for one part. Okay, And try to do all the three parts within one year Okay, at the maximum. Okay. Of course, some people will take more, but if you take this within one year, I think you're maximizing your chances for success. And the study time may, va may vary based on how recently you've completed school or educations, uh, as I was saying before, the years of experience, your background in accounting and IT for the third part, uh, the study method, and how quickly you are comprehending topics as well. The second, in the first step, you want to create a study plan. There's a smart study tool that is uh, embedded in the CIA learning system. Uh, so it's very, uh, it's very, it's a great tool. I think it's very easy to assess your strengths and weaknesses. And by completing all the information, it will tell you where to invest your time. Okay, maybe you're very good in a certain uh, part of the second exam because you have a lot of experience in, in, in internal audit, and maybe you will want to spend more time on something that you are um, you need to study more. Okay, so use the results to create a comprehensive step-by-step -step plan and how to invest your hours that you want to in invest in the future. Then you want to study the reading material, okay? Uh, of course, you can have the, uh, all the reading material can be read online or downloaded to your e-reader device, okay? If you need to have printed books, they are available as an optional add-ons, okay? Uh, and uh, there's some IPPF video tutorial that are encompassed within the CI learning system as well, okay? So you need to at least read this one time and maybe go a second time depending on your knowledge regarding this, sec this section as well. After you will be studying, okay, you want to make sure that you will be able to apply the different concepts, okay? For every section within the CI learning system, there's some section quizzes, okay? So you want to make sure that for every section, you will be reading and then doing the quizzes as well. You want to make sure that you are applying the concept very well, and you want to make sure that if you don't have the right answer on the questions, uh, it will give you the, the right answer, but also why you didn't have the right answer, okay? So it's part of your learning experience as well. Again, in the, third, um, in the third step to apply the concept, there's some flashcards and some glossary, okay, that are invented in the CI learning system. You want to make sure that you have the, the right um, knowledge regarding the different definition and the different concept that are discussed throughout if you don't if you have this experience or if you're speaking another language, you want to make sure to come back to these flashcards and glossary to make sure that you understand the different definition um, or the different concept included in the CI certification. Very important, um, the, the last step is the practice for your, uh, for your exam, okay? There's a CIE practice exam in the CIE learning system uh, where you, it will be a simulation of the CIE exam. Of course, it will not be the same questions, but it will have the same format and the one that you will do um, uh, during the during the real testing. 
Okay, so of course you want to make sure that you're using this very thoroughly after you are finished uh, doing your study and applying the different concepts. You want to practice for the exam, okay? And there's a timer that you can use as well during the exam to make sure that you have a good time management practice when you're doing your practice exam. Now I'm going to give you some CIE study tips and test taking tips, okay? Although you have a good experience in internal audit, although you may have studied maybe 40, 50 hours, if you are not good at test taking, uh, you may have a problem and be successful for the CIA exam. But it's not, it's not very complex. So you need to make sure that you understand some basic concept in order to make sure that you are maximizing your chances for success. Some study tip, of course, you need to choose the right study method for your uh, learning styles, okay? Uh, of, you want to set your exam date. Uh, be realistic, but avoid procrastination, okay? Want to make sure that you're well prepared. Uh, you don't want to put this in two weeks if you haven't st started studied yet. You don't want to put this in four months if you just will just be kicking this forward, okay? So procrastination will be your worst enemy. So set your first exam uh, day to me and be realistic and set a study plan as well. It's very important for you to see, okay, there's a path that the CI learning system is giving you. Uh, it has been proven, it has been enhanced with by experience as well, and it's very um, beneficial for all the candidates. Know your strengths and weaknesses, okay? Make sure that you are studying the, on the, the section that you are have the most problem, of course. Um, put extra work on the studying word proficiency area. You will see that when you will be starting studying, uh, some of the concepts are just, uh, you have to know this at the basic level and some at the proficiency level, okay? Make sure that you're putting extra effort in uh, when you're studying for proficiency areas as well. And be prepared for the computer-based test format, okay? It's, uh, I think it, it has been proven from the last month that it has been very efficient, uh, but be prepared to take your exam at home from now. Some other study tips, okay? Of course, you do the reading. Um, memory is getting better when you are writing, so sometimes write uh, the IPPF or rewrite some of the concept that you want to make sure that you are, um, you want to make sure that you, maybe something you're always forgetting or you're not catching on a right away. Solidify your concept by thinking uh, of real life examples and put yourself in a new job or new new job sometime will be uh, you will be in a publicly traded company. And maybe it's not the case right now, okay? The questions will be different from one candidate to another, but it doesn't depend on your experience. So maybe you want to put yourself in another position, okay, where sometimes you are the chief audit executive who reports to the audit committee of the board, okay? Sometimes they're going to ask you some question where you have a large audit department with varying staffing levels, Okay, but if you have an advantage, if depending on your experience, if you have manufacturing, accounts payable, purchasing, or other type of processes within an organization experience in the past years. Now, some test taking tips. Okay, you will see that some of the question could be, we will say sometimes easy, sometimes a bit nasty. Okay, but sometimes you want to make sure that you are applying the the right. Uh, the right approach, the right techniques, okay? Of course, you read the last sentences question before the details, okay? You want to look for, um, for clues such as all, accept, or not. If you are not good at are catching these words, you will not be um, always um, very good in answering the question. So some of the key words you want to pay a certain attention. Uh, eliminates obvious distractors, okay? Um, wrong answer, okay? Oh, it's all multiple choices. Of course, sometimes we'll see that it's always easy to eliminate two options. And you want to make sure that you are trusting your first impression and avoid overanalyzing. Like Jonathan was saying before, okay, you have a limited time, a period of time to answer the questions. So you want to make sure that you will be focusing your attention on the best two options. Okay. Of course, you will have to budget your time and don't rush. Okay. Of course, and be well rested and comfortable for the exam when it will be happening. Very good. Now I'm going to switch to uh, Kelly Quinn who will continue the presentation. 
up to you, Kelly. Great. Thank you so much, Daniel, for providing all those helpful study tips and to Jonathan for the great information he shared about the exam and registration and the benefits for becoming certified. Thanks to you both. Um, I am pleased to share with you that we have a special discount available for those people who wish to purchase the ISDA Learning System study materials to prepare for the exam. The materials are available by individual part or by full kit, and we also have discounts for IA members. In addition to that discount, we are also offering an additional 20% off those prices for those who are attending the call today. So to purchase at this discounted price, you can go to learnci.com and enter the discount code at checkout, CIA920. So this offer will be available until September 15th, um, and you can purchase, use that right at the website. In addition, if you have a friend or colleague that you know is also studying and you want to join and purchase two together, we have additional discounts, volume discounts available. Again, those just start at two or more. And my colleague, Mike Downs, can help you with that if you're interested in obtaining the discounted prices for groups. Uh, Mike's email is listed here, mike.downs at di.org. So if you're interested in combining your purchase, please feel free to call, contact Mike, and he can help um, provide you with that information. In addition, I'd like to share two resources. Um, the first is an uh, important one, di.org backslash CIA. Many of the tools and resources that Jonathan mentioned earlier can be found on this site, including the handbook. And this is also where you'll go into the candidate management system to apply and register for the exam. Uh, there's also some exam um, FAQs there. So any really exam information you wish to know, you could find there. The other website I'll share is our learning system website, and this is for the exam preparation. So learnci.com is where you can order those learning system materials at that 20% discount. We also have some free practice questions available there, some additional test-taking tips and exam tips. And then if you're interested in taking an instructor-led course, whether it's online or a live course, we have courses around the world, and those listing of those courses are available at this site by clicking on courses offered once you go to learnci.com. So those are two important links which will help you with your exam preparation. Now the fun part, we get to do a drawing for a winner of a free online CI seminar. So the winner will be able to choose from these three options if they wish to take part one, two, or three. This is valued at almost $1,500. US So I'm going to turn it over to Miguel to do the random drawing and announce the winner. Okay, so the winner is this drawing is Sylvia Garcia. Sylvia Garcia. Great, congrats, Sylvia. We will reach out to you directly to ask you which seminar you wish to attend, and we'll make sure to get you um, registered and get your materials to you. So, congratulations. Okay, we do have a little bit of time left for some questions and answers. I just wanted to make a quick note. If you'd like to download these slides or you'd like a recording of the presentation, this is the website where we'll be posting those, learncia.com backslash webinar slash archive. Give us a couple of days. Those will be posted within a few days, I'd say by no later than Monday. We'll have them available for you. Um, so now we'll go through some questions and answers. And if we did not get to your question, because we only have a lim limited time here, we will follow up with you directly and answer a question. So I'm now going to turn it over to Miguel to read some of our questions that have come in. All right. It looks like we have a question for Jonathan. I've been an, an internal auditor for 10 years, but I don't have a degree. Can I still pursue CAA certification? Thank you, Miguel. Um, and uh, for that question, the answer is yes. Um, it is what is referred to as an alternative pathway. Um, and uh, you're able to uh, get enrolled into the CIA program. And the only difference is that you are required to submit more experience. Um, and the good thing about the application process now is that it will tell you the exact amount of experience that you will need to evidence. 
um, when you upload your documentation. So um, if any of you have already you know, enrolled into the program, then you're pretty familiar with the process. But for anyone new, um, once you create a CCMS profile, um, you will go and upload your, uh, your supporting documents. And for each document that you support, there is kind of like a little pathway that you follow. Uh, it's just point and click, and then it'll let you know exactly what you need to submit in order to be approved into the program. So the long and short answer is yes. All right, great. Thanks, Jonathan. Our next question is for Kelly. I purchased the CIA learning system materials last year. Will they be valid to use if I take exams in 2020? Do I need to repurchase? That's a good question. Yes, if you purchased last year, you would have purchased our current version 6, and those are still applicable for the exam. There has not been an exam change this year, so you'll be good to go uh, if you, as long as you have a version six and you can find that by looking on the bottom pages of your books or if you have an online only account, it will state your version when you log into the software. Great, thank you, Kelly. Our next question is for Daniel. Can I take the online quizzes multiple times? How many times do you recommend taking each quiz and what score should I be getting to feel prepared? Very good questions. Thank you very much, Miguel. Uh, can I take the online quizzes multiple times? The, the answer is yes. You can do them as long as you, as many times as you, you want to. Uh, and the second question, how many times do you recommend taking each quiz? I would say at least at least two times, okay? Uh, to make sure that, uh, okay, the second time, you want to make sure that you are getting the right answer after you know why you didn't get the right answer the first time. But if you don't have the right answer the second time, um, just maybe print the, print, print the question, print the rhetoric, because sometimes there's a, something you don't catch in this, and it's not because you know the, uh, the answer by art. Um, and the third question is, what score should I be getting to, um, to feel prepared? I would say at least 75% on the, the quiz. When you do this a second time, at least 75 to 80%. You want to make sure that you are showing up well prepared, very, very, very well confident when you're showing up for the exam. So I would say between 75 and 80% will give you this uh, level of confidence as well. Thank you, Daniel. This next question goes to Jonathan. I am a new internal auditor and I only have 10 months of work experience. Can I take the CIA exam? Absolutely. Um, there are no experience requirements uh, initially. Um, so when you uh, get approved into the program, um, you're not required to evidence experience until you are um, exited. So experience is the exit requirement um, as long as you meet the other criteria with the character reference, you know, education and the photo ID, you are able to be approved into the CIA program. So experience will not deter you. Thanks. This next question is for Kelly. How long am I able to access the online software? What happens if I run out of time? Thanks, Miguel. So if you originally purchased a full kit, which is all three parts, it will include two years of online software access from the date of your purchase. If you purchase a single part, you would have received one year of online access. If you do need additional time, though, we do offer online extensions. And more information about that can be found by going to learnci.com backslash extension. So again, learn ci.com backslash extension. And there's information there in the process of how to apply for an extension if you need additional time. I will just note that in order to qualify for an extension, you do need to be registered for an exam part. So as long as you're registered for an exam part, we can extend your access until the end of your six month exam eligibility window. Great. Thank you, Kelly. Our next question is for Daniel. Do you recommend taking an instructor-led course, and will it help me pass? 
Uh, yes, I would recommend to take uh, an instructor-led course. Uh, maybe if you're not as lucky as Silvia Garcia, who's just one, uh, one, one, one today. Uh, of course, it will help you pass the exam. Uh, when you're studying on your own uh, with the CI Innocence Learning System, it is very, it's great. Uh, but sometimes when you want to exchange with other people, with an instructor, and um, understand the concept coming from different different industries than yourself or different contexts as well, and maybe most of the um, the the coach, the CIA coach like myself, our chief audit executive, and can, can give you some example, real life example that will help you understand the concept in order to maximize your chance of passing the exam. So, of course, the answer is definitely yes. I would recommend an instructor-led course for the CIE. Thank you, Daniel. Our next question goes to Jonathan. I want to take the exam in Spanish. Am I also able to view the English version of the questions or only in Spanish? Yes, absolutely you are. Um, and just to kind of call back to earlier in the presentation, um, if you do select the language outside of English, um, you will have the ability to toggle back and forth between a translation, an English translation, and the native language that you selected your, uh, to take the exam in. Um, so this is uh, available for you whether or not you're doing uh, the online test or if you were taking the exam physically at a test center. So good question and the answer is yes. Thank you, Jonathan. Our next question goes to Kelly. I'd like to enroll in a class, but I don't think there's one close to me. Are there any other options? Yes, we do have a variety of online courses. Um, those are a list of those can be found if you go to learncia.com. And once you're there, if you click on courses offered, there's a listing of all the classes around the world. At the top of that section, there's an online course section. So I recommend checking there if there's not a course nearby, especially with the pandemic. Uh, most of our courses have actually switched to an online format. So um, it's very common. Uh, in addition, those classes are almost all recorded. So if they happen to be, if the class you're interested in happens to be in a time zone in which um, it doesn't work for you, just please know that you can access the recordings and then listen to the lectures at a time that's convenient for you. So I would just verify that with the course provider when you're registering, but almost all of them do provide the recordings with the registration. Thank you. The next question goes to Jonathan. I passed part one and two in 2018, but still have to take part three. Do I need to retake the parts now that the exam has changed? And more good news. Uh, you do not have to retake those exam parts as long as your program remains active. Um, so for anybody who is currently in the program, um, this is why you want to make sure that your program remains active. Um, if you uh, believe that maybe you're going to run out of time uh, and your program could expire, you definitely want to submit the program extension form that is available from your CCMS record. Um, you can submit that and it will give you an additional year to complete your program. Um, if your program expires, however, then those exam parts would expire along with the application. So very important if you've taken uh, exam parts before and you want to retain those, make sure to keep your certification program active until you earn the certification. Thank you. And it looks like I have another one for you as well, Jonathan. It is. Once approved into the program, how long does one have to pass all three parts? So we give you a uh, uh, initial time frame of three years from the date that you are approved. So it will be um, the calendar year. So if you're approved, let's say August 20th, then you'll have, you know, three years from August 20th to complete the program. However, um, as I mentioned in the uh, previous question, if you did need additional time, then you can submit the program extension form, which will give you an additional year 
to complete your certification program. Thank you. This next question goes to Kelly. Can I retake the practice exams multiple times? Yes, that's one of the benefits of the learning system, Miguel. Uh, the, the exams and the practice tests can be taken as many times as the candidate wishes. Uh, there's no limit on how long you can access those or how, long, how many times you can take them as long as you still have the access. Although one tip we do um, recommend to candidates is to just be cautious of how many times you're taking those practice exams. We find that sometimes the candidates rely too much on the practice questions, and even though there are thousands of questions in the system, they inadvertently end up just memorizing the answer versus really learning the information. So one tip is uh, we recommend is really spending the time in the reading materials and making sure you have a very thorough understanding of the concepts, and then just use the practice questions to reinforce that and to test your knowledge but we do not recommend taking them. If you're taking those practice questions, you know, um, quizzes 10, 20 times each, you'll likely just end up memorizing the answers. So although you can take them as many times as you like, we just um, warn you not to take them too many times. Thank you. Next question goes to Jonathan. Is it permissible to sit for more than one part in one day? Yes, uh, you are able to do that. Um, it's very flexible. Uh, the, the the program um, is, is is very flexible to your study habits or study needs, um, time constraints. So if you wanted to take parts one, two, and three all in the same day, although I would not recommend it, uh, you definitely can if you'd like. Um, the only restriction that you have is in the event of a failed exam. So if you take the exam um, and you are unsuccessful, you're not able to take that same exam no sooner than 60 days from the date that you failed. So um, 60 days, you cannot take the same exam. However, if you decide you want to move on and take a different exam part, you're able to do that um, at any time. And um, another question for Jonathan. Can I take the exam in Spanish if I'm located in the U.S.? Yes, the answer is yes, you are able to take the exam um, in multiple languages, um, even if you reside in, you know, like the U.S. Um, uh, or, for instance, if you're in, you know, the U.K. and you want to take an exam in Polish, you're able to do that as well. Um, it's very open. You will have the ability to select the exam language of your choice when you're going through the scheduling process. And again, just to reiterate, you do have that English pop-up window that's available just in case uh, there's any questions about the translation as you're taking the exam. Great, thank you. Next question goes to Kelly. Are the learning system materials available in multiple languages? Yeah, uh, so currently the learning system materials are available in English, and it's also available in simplified Chinese. Um, we are looking at potential other languages for the future, but at the moment they're available in those two languages. Great. And we have another question to Jonathan. Do IIA members receive a discount on exam application and registration fees? Yes, yes, and yes again. I encourage anyone out there who is in the sound of my voice, if you're not a member of the IIA, I encourage you to join. Um, not only is it discounted, um, I think just off the top of my head, I, I want to say like the out-of-pocket cost total program as a non-member is like almost $1,200 in comparison to a member, which is closer to like 800 so it's a huge savings. But then also, um, if there are promotions that are ran by the IIA, then some of those are only available to members. Um, so you definitely want to be a member. Not only that, but it gives you access to additional guidance. Um, so this isn't the uh, mandatory guidance, but it's additional guidance that will help you, especially in that part one 
um, and uh, the part two parts of the exam, um, the additional guidance kind of helps to frame um, some of the content in the domain. So you definitely want to uh, join and take advantage of membership um, if you have not already. There is discounts available. Thank you, Jonathan. So we are at the conclusion of today's broadcast. I want to thank all of our presenters for a great presentation. And remember, if we didn't have time to get your question today, we will be responding to you directly. Thank you everyone for attending. Have a good day.